How big the planet Earth? What the size of other planets? What the distances between planets and stars and galaxies in the cosmos? Let's talk about that. In this series of episodes on the measurements in space, we talk about the Earth itself. Logically, it will be the first celestial body to have been measured by people. But who was the first person who realized how to measure the Earth? What was his measurements? How you actually measure the Earth without being able to fly into the sky or space? Well, let's talk about that. We all know the size, shape of our Earth from books and from internet. It's so easy these days. How many of us start thinking how actually we measure that? Who was the first person who did this? How did they did this? It is impossible to walk all around the equator and measure the actual size of the Earth. So there must be other way how to do it. To first to develop theory how to measure the size of the Earth, you need to realize its shape. Depends on the shape, it will be different ways you will measure the Earth. In modern days, we have numerous satellites constantly floating around our planet in the space, which give us precise up to a centimeter resolution distances and measurements photography of our planet. However, it's not always been available for people. The first actual correct measurements of the Earth, which we know about, were already performed 3rd century before the birth of Christ, so almost two and a half thousand years ago. Very clever ancient Greek scientist Eratosphen, who was actually a geographer, poet, musician and mathematician. He was the first who performed measurements of the Earth we know about. He even published his work on the measure of the Earth, which unfortunately not survived till these days. Eratosphen already knew that the Earth is spherical. He didn't know the exact shape of the Earth, which we use these days and call it geoid. But he estimated as quite precisely the size of the Earth using the simple trigonometry which developed that days in ancient Greece. So to measure the actual size of the Earth, Eratosphenes used the spherical understanding of the Earth. He figured if we find a place with the sun rays coming directly into the Earth and in the midday of the solstice, they don't give any shadow, any angle. If we use the meridian which this place coming through and measure at the same time the angle of this sun rays, which for Eratosphenes was the Alexandria, Knowing the distance between this point where the rays doesn't give any shadow and the point where we have the angle of the shadow, we can figure out on the circumference around the planet and then just multiply it by what part it takes this angle and figure out the actual circumference of the Earth itself. So taking into account that we have meridian coming from the little city he used Siena at that time, located very south of the Egypt in Alexandria. He measured the angle of the shadow in Alexandria and figure out it is about 7 degrees. So the 7 degrees was part of 360 degrees circumference around the Earth. Knowing the distance between Siena and Alexandria, which was quite precisely measured at the time, during the program the time around the Greece Empire, they were measuring the distances. So they correctly measure in the Greece Stadia the distance between Alexandria and Siena. Just multiplying it by 51, which is 360 of the sphere, he figured out the circumference of the Earth. Unfortunately, the book where he described his measurements didn't survive. And we can assume stadia measurements, which in ancient Greek was the size of the stadium, could vary, because we're not sure the measurements of which stadium he was using in this work. Therefore, we can assume that the error of the calculation of Eratosphen was vary from 0.8% till 2.4%, which is for two and a half thousand years ago for ancient Greek is impressively close to the reality. In the modern days, we know that the Earth is not perfectly spheric. It's slightly larger around the equator, so it's a little bit bulged sphere around the equator and a little bit shorter from the center of the Earth till the poles, due to rotation of the Earth constantly around its all axis. Therefore, the gravity causing the bulging of the sphere around the equator, like an ellipsoid shape. Approximately this difference between equator circumference and the poles meridian circumference about 42 kilometers. 
which is quite significant for our understanding. Also, the actual size of the Earth is very varied. We have continents bulging out, we have oceans, depressions, we have an even composition of the Earth and as a result its density and gravitational pull. The ocean layer on top of the Earth is varied as well depending on its gravitational field. Thus, big continents, they have larger gravitational pull and we have thicker oceans around continents that in the open ocean areas. You also have tidal changes within the crust and the ocean. You have currents of the atmosphere changing the shape of the ocean as well. So you have to include all these parameters if you're trying to estimate precisely the shape of the Earth. In Earth science we call it geoid which is studied by geodesists, the scientists who are studying geodesy, the shape, the parameters, the gravitation of our Earth. This geoid is approximation of our shape of the Earth according to its local gravity field. So we call it equipotential surface to which gravity is normal and most closely approximate mean sea level over the entire Earth. Mean sea level will not mean particular sea level which you experience when you go on the beach. It's the approximation around the whole Earth, even sea level on the continents, which will, it will be if we take into account the gravity field of the, our Earth. And we know that the bigger mass of the body, so the more denser, the heavier, the bigger gravity pull it has. So depends on composition and size of the continent's crust or whatever medium you have under your ocean, it will attract more water or less. Therefore, mean sea level will be so varied from place to place. But in the modern days, practicality or our global positioning system, GPS, give us up to half a meter precise position for our sea level and you respectively to that. Using the geoid and other parameters in calculation of your position. It is a very hard job to understand your particular position. Thankfully, we have numerous satellites in the space which use each other data, the data on the Earth, and calculate using these models you, your position. Therefore, due to, to this non-spherical shape of the Earth, we know that the most furthest point from the central of the Earth will be not Everest, the highest mountain of the Earth, but actually the volcano closer to equator in Ecuador, Chimborazo. It's about two kilometers more distant from the center of the Earth than the highest Mount Everest. Therefore, you understand the shape of our Earth is not as perfect as we imagine or see on our satellite images or see on the images from the space. It's constantly changing with the changing oceans, currents, tidal pools, and also with the changes of constantly moving continents, building new mountain ridges and destroying crusts in the melting asthenosphere. Therefore, the shape of our Earth changing not just depends where you're going on the Earth's surface, but also with time. See my other videos to continue to talk about measurements in the space, planetary measurements, measurements till our closest object in our solar system, in our galaxy, and outside.